I saw Sound of Freedom over the weekend. I experienced a whole range of emotions. Through this fact-based film, an emotional film, I, I cried. I was despondent. Yes, I laughed. Then I figuratively looked in the mirror. Uh, am I doing enough, I asked myself. And then I got angry. I got very angry. Not only at those who have promoted and created an atmosphere for the sexual exploitation of children, but at those who are turning a blind eye to it and trying to convince others to turn a blind eye to it as well, all in an effort to help the left-wing party in this country. Evil, the perpetrators and the enablers. That's our focus in today's preamble. Harvey Weinstein, he was a sexual predator who targeted women. It was an open secret in Hollywood and Democrat circles for decades. But his reign of terror was allowed to go on because so-called news organizations refused to report on the myriad allegations. Why? Well, he was a big Democrat donor. Former ABC News anchor Amy Warbach was caught on tape lamenting how she had everything on the Epstein story three years before it was busted wide open. She had Bill Clinton. She had everything she needed. But ABC spiked the story. Why? Epstein, the world's most prolific child predator, was a big Democrat donor. Fast forward to Joe Biden, a man who has numerous photos and videos showing inappropriate touching of females and children, and his open border Democrat policies, policies that have led to this. I thought I was going to help place children in loving homes. Instead, I discovered that children are being trafficked through a sophisticated network that begins with recruiting in home country, smuggling to the U.S. border, and ends when ORR delivers a child to a sponsor. Some sponsors are criminals and traffickers and members of transnational criminal organizations. Some sponsors view children as commodities and assets to be used for earning income. This is why we are witnessing an explosion of labor trafficking. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it could be argued that the United States government has become the middleman in a large-scale, multi-billion-dollar child trafficking operation. Two weeks ago, The Sound of Freedom hit movie theaters. It finished number three in its debut weekend. It finished number two its second weekend. It's getting stronger. Leftists who bothered to go see the movie derided it as saying that conservatives who showed up, they seemed to think that they were watching Top Gun, another pro-America movie, ripped by the left-wing media and their devotees. A producer of The Chris Salcedo Show mentioned she was going to see the film to a group of people she was with. One person in that group responded to her by saying, I didn't know you were a Republican. And that's how the left sees this. Only Republicans are conservatives, care about stopping the sexual exploitation of children. After witnessing left-wing luminaries and their response to the Sound of Freedom movie, I can only conclude that assessment is accurate. A fringe left-wing extremist host at MSNBS, his name is Mehdi Hassan, he responded to an uncharacteristically fair tweet from the New York Times, quote, Sound of Freedom starring Jim Caviezel tells a story of child trafficking and the people combating it. Read our review of the unlikeliest, unlikeliest box office hit of the summer, end quote. Now, Mr. Hassan responded, Quote, embarrassing once again from the context-free, normalizing extremism, New York Times Twitter account. End quote. Now, I, your liberty-loving Latino, responded with a sincere question that I think NBC's management and Mr. Hassan should answer. I asked, did Mehdi Hassan of MSNBS just decry raising awareness of the subhuman, grotesque, and growing child sex slave trade? Because that's what his tweet looks like. Can you please... Clarify, Mr. Hassan, are you committed, as most Americans are, to killing the child sex slave trade? Of course, I got no response. But Hassan's vile tweet was tame compared to what CNN did, lying to their audience about Sound of Freedom. And the Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. 
Mm -hmm. I watched the entire film. There wasn't a kernel of truth focusing on the child sex slave trade. It was the entirety of the movie. None of CNN's claims of QAnon conspiracy theories made it into this film. In fact, it seems CNN's goal was simply to say sound of freedom and QAnon together as many times as possible during their sick and twisted interview in an effort to dissuade those silly enough to still watch that stupid network from seeing it. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel and, by extension, only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie. You're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now, it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's very warm feeling to have. Oh, okay, I see. So when the left-wing nutcases in this country, they make movies featuring their sacred cows, pushing the falsehood that America is a racist country, pushing the transvestite agenda, pushing wokeness in general. Oh, that's all okay. They're just raising awareness. But when God-centered people try to actually raise awareness of a real and growing menace, a menace that puts children into hell on earth, oh, that's not worthwhile to a guy like Mike Rothschild. Only did you notice how Mr. Rothschild there says, well, there are bogus statistics, but he couldn't name one. I suppose that would require that he see the movie, and no left-winger will fund an effort that runs counter to the Democrats' agenda. In a recent interview, Tim Ballard, the agent on which the movie is based, said the real question should be why these folks at places like CNN want to run interference for child predators Mr. Ballard said the film was accurate and real because he was there. I think Americans should start to ask serious questions about MSNBS, CNN, and other networks who would bury such an important story, all in an effort to once again protect Democrats from being held accountable for their policies that harm so many, in this case, bolstering the sexual exploitation of children into the United States. And shame on you, Abby Phillip, for your lying to your audience. What a low rent and classless thing for a leftist to do when children's lives are at stake. But the GOP, they're not too far behind CNN, are they? Let's see. From cocaine and pot of the White House to credible accusations of criminal foreign influence peddling to Dr. Fauci having been proven to have lied under oath to Adam Schiff escaping a financial penalty for weaponizing the Intelligence Committee against our own people. It seems Washington, including the Republican Party, are hell-bent on making sure Democrats pay no price for their lawless abuse. Now, despite some propaganda out there, Fox News will not hold the first candidate forum of 2024's presidential cycle. That distinction will go to Tucker Carlson, who sat down with Republicans last week. Candidate Chris Christie whom we are coordinating with Newsmax here to appear on this show, is calling President Trump a coward because Trump has signaled he won't show up to the second candidate forum of the season. In addition, Christie blasting Tucker Carlson's views on Ukraine. Now, that led Tucker to remind the public, quote, we just asked at Governor Chris Christie to sit down and explain his views on Ukraine. He refused. You hate to think that Chris Christie is a blustery coward who plays the tough guy with sycophants at ABC but won't answer real questions, end quote. Now, folks, let that sink in. Chris Christie is blasting Trump for not debating while simultaneously ducking Tucker Carlson. Ukraine, it actually came up in that candidate forum, in particular, disturbing stories about the religious persecution of Christians in Ukraine. Watch. I would think you would have greater concern for religious liberty in Ukraine. And I'm surprised. I, I told by your you answer. I raised the issue of religious liberty. You, know, you spoke to one person who's clearly I didn't on say one I side of it, person. and I, there are many, many news reports that are not disputed by anybody that right. many clergy have been arrested in Ukraine. And I'm merely saying I may not agree with their views. I'm not Russian Orthodox, but you can't arrest clergy for having different views. Period. Because if you do, you violate the basic tenet of look. I, I won't look. I want to be clear with you. I won't stand by it. I won't stand for it. 
If people are being persecuted for their religious beliefs, I won't stand for it. All right, as billions of U.S. tax dollars are flowing into Ukraine, it is incumbent on elected officials of both political parties to make sure that money isn't funding in any way religious persecution. Sadly, with Joe Biden's Democrats in charge, we have our own hands full with religious persecutions of Christians right here in the United States, courtesy of our own government, like the FBI and DOJ. And speaking of government of abuse, that, you know, that too came up in the candidate forum as it pertains in particular to medical freedom stolen by our government in the pandemic. One of the powers that government did usurp uh, over the past several years is, is the right to decide what medicine you take in the form of, of COVID mandates. Um, how did you feel about that? And how many COVID shots did you take? And how do you feel about it now, in retrospect? How many COVID shots did you take? Zero. <laughs> but, but I think it's fair, and I, and I could see that you recoiled when I asked you that question. Um, and I don't think, honestly, you should be asking people about their medical care, but that became a, a matter of public policy. See, you know, folks, the Mitch McConnell strain in the GOP is quite dangerous. I mean, the idea that big government is good so long as the GOP is running it is a fallacy. It's a joke. It's a threat. A conservative knows that the answer to that question, without even thinking, conservatives would respond this way. I oppose government mandates of all kinds, in particular medical mandates, and it is none of government's or your business how many injections of legal medications I take. Sadly, the GOP has lost any claim to clear conviction, that moral clarity that comes from principled constitutional conservatism. In short, an alarming number of Republicans have lost the ability to effectively oppose Democrats. My friends, that's not a good thing. It's clear that the left wing and their political party have been up to some pretty wicked stuff the last few decades. As the godless Marxists have exerted even greater control of the Democrat Party, education and entertainment, America's fortunes have proportionally only gotten worse. A note to the presidential candidates on the Republican side. The Democrats are not working in half measures in their efforts to steal our liberty, security, and prosperity. You can't act in half measure to oppose them. And if you're not inclined to oppose Democrats, thinking that President Trump is the problem, then you run the very real risk of identifying yourself as the problem because the vast majority of Americans don't support a political party and movement that is based on lies, as the Democrat Party is. We don't support a worldview that would allow children to be victimized just to protect the political fortunes of those who are truly evil. And because the vast majority of Americans love our country and don't want to see the American way of life choked out by left-wing pollution, most Americans would like to hear how you plan to defeat the Democrats' destructive agenda rather than how you're going to meet them halfway.